This podcast is brought to you by the Kansas City Barbecue Store, the official provider of barbecue supplies to listeners of Pitmaster. And you don't want to miss out on this discount from the Kansas City Barbecue Store. From smokers and fuel to rubs and sauces, the Kansas City Barbecue Store has everything and anything you could possibly want. Make the Kansas City Barbecue Store your one-stop shop for all your outdoor cooking needs. As a listener of the OVS Pitmaster podcast, you can get 10% off of your order this spring by using the code PITPOD, P-I-T-P-O-D, all caps, for online orders at www.thekansascitybarbecuestore.com. This podcast is brought to you by BarbecueData.com. BarbecueData.com is your one-stop shop for all of your barbecue competition data. Historical data, calls, wins, placements, everything under one roof. It's a great way not only to track yourself in the standings, but also to track how you improve your scores from year to year. Listeners of this podcast can receive 20% off of a new subscription to BarbecueData.com with the code PITPOD. That's one word, all capital letters, P-I-T-P-O-D, PITPOD. So check your team scores, check on others, and do it all on BarbecueData.com. Welcome to another edition of Pitmaster, an old Virginia Smoke podcast. My name is Luke Darnell, host of the podcast. And we have with us two very important and special guests today coming off the back of the American Royal. We have David Ellis with Machete Boys, and we have Jordan Kirkpatrick with Janky Leg. How are you guys doing? Good, fantastic. It is great to have both of you on here at the same time. So what's been going on? Anything cool? (laughs) Nothing at all. (laughs) Not much for me, man. Just uh, just working. They say, they say the Royal changes your life, but it's still day-to-day for me, man. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, you know, it's fun that we get to go to the barbecue snow globe, as I call it, spend a week there and have a good time with our friends, do all kinds of weird and goofy stuff. Uh, like, I got an IV this year at the Royal. That was interesting. And Did Joe then, put that together? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was my second one that week. What were you guys doing? That you Nothing. needed two. I just... walked in prior. I walked into the trailer prior to it happening, and it looked like a party from when I was like twenty. I was like, I should. <laughs> this is That's... this is the kind of party it's... that I want to be. I mean, it sounds like back in my day when I was in Vegas and on a three day bender, and we had to have IVs to get through day two. But at the Royal, it's not that bad, is it? Well, some of us live a little hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, all these things happen, and uh, it's very rare that we have an American Royal that uh, both of you won at one point. Pretty interesting, um, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, the first thing that I want to say is, I want to commend both of you on how you guys have handled uh, the situation with uh, David being announced as the winner and then having that uh, be changed after an audit to Jordan. Um, I don't, I don't know that this situation would be what it is except for it happening to the two of you and you guys being such good friends. I mean, I I would agree with that. Right. So um, I I think, you know, it, everything happens for a reason, right? In in the grand scheme of things, we're all human, right? And we should treat each other with respect. And, you know, it's no fault of Jordan or no fault of my own. Um, you know, so it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't pay to just to, to go out there and have any other message than the messages we put out there. So, um, that was, that was my view on it, man. I can treat with everyone with respect and, you know, give them the respect that they deserve. And that's just an easy decision to make on my side. Yeah, so I feel like we were just kind of both caught in the crosshairs. Um, I really don't – I've had a lot of people, you know, you see on Facebook and just phone calls, you know, you and David have handled it with class and grace, and I don't really know how else you handle it. You know, I mean, we could we could be pissy and, and throw a huge, you know, fit, but at the end of the day, it doesn't change anything. It happened. We're both affected by it. Um, 
I think we can all agree that we just hope that something positive comes out of this. It's best. We get the answers we want. Uh, and hopefully we can refrain from something like this ever happening again. Absolutely. What has been the outreach from other cook teams been like over the past couple of weeks? It's been a lot, man. Um, you know, it, it's it's kind of weird because I think from this point forward, me and David are kind of connected. You know, we're bonded with this with this situation because no matter what is said to me, it's always me and him are kind of uh, put together in the conversation. Um, I've had a, a ton of people reach out. You know, everyone says the same thing, man. We're really sorry you didn't get to experience the moment. Uh, we know that, you know, we know you've worked hard to get to this point and it would have been cool for you to, to experience it. Um, but as I've said before, like uh, I did an interview with a, a news station and <clears throat> they kind of asked me my opinion on it. And I just said, you know, it, it happened. Uh, the trigger has been pulled bullets out of the chamber. You can't really call it back. So you just kind of, kind of play the cards that were dealt. And I think that's kind of what me and David are trying to do at this point. Yeah, man. I, I think you you can said it better there. Um, you know, the the barbecue community is probably one of the best communities that are out there as far as like a contender standpoint, because it seems like we're all friends first and we care about each other first. And then, you know, the competition part comes after that. Right. Um, and I think I, I haven't seen that be uh, more more displayed now than um, than than previously. So. You know, it uh, it it happened, man. And it's just all we can do is uh, try to offer up solutions so that we can improve the system and and try and push it forward, man. So that's uh, that's where I'm at with it, right? Uh, my opinion, the KCBS is a, a kind of an old, dated organization, and uh, you know they just they gotta they gotta they gotta invest in the future a little bit. So um, you know, I'm hoping I'm hopeful that that's uh, that's the message that we're going to be hearing coming out of them, coming out from them here soon. So uh, yeah, there's a couple of different ways. Uh, I want to go based on what you guys have said. Uh, let's start with uh, the KCBS aspect of this. How do you think that they handle this situation uh, with, you know, realizing that it was wrong, trying to, to get it right and then auditing it? Let's, let's start by establishing a timeline, right? Um, Cause I, I know what my experience was, and I'm curious if Jordan's was the same, right? So I know I left uh, I left Sunday, and it was like probably like close to 11 o'clock by the time before I got off the track. And then we drove to Des Moines, 6 o'clock in the morning. Monday, we headed back to – we got back to Minneapolis here about, uh, about 11 o'clock or so. Um, and then I saw that scores were posted, but I had trouble – I think everyone had trouble probably downloading those scores just because they – like the server – the server couldn't handle all the traffic or whatever that was going there. Um, so I didn't really, I didn't really think about the score as much that night, Monday night, I was still kind of responding to messages. And so, and then Tuesday came along and then I started looking through the scores. I noticed a couple of things that were, were weird, um, but nothing, nothing huge uh, like that. Cause I didn't really, I honestly didn't spend a ton of time looking at it. And then I didn't get a call until about seven 30 uh, Tuesday night from Rod saying that they were going to audit the scores. So um, it was, it was, that was a pretty, pretty slow response. And I, I think I said, and uh, I, I said previously that, you know, I think before that it would have been nice if before they had published those scores, if they would have just done a double check quick to make sure that they were right before they put them up there and then just sent out a message telling us, Hey, uh, we got to take another look at this, right? Rather. Cause I think, once everyone saw the scores and then that's when the rumor mill started. And then that's when, um, that's when all the other, all the other things started instead of KCBS being upfront and forward with it. Like it felt like that, you know, what is that 36 hours between Monday when that, those were published. And when I got a phone call from Rod, that was a pretty slow, slow response on, on my end. Right. And then it was Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, it was uh, nothing. And then Thursday at about four o'clock is when I got the phone call from Rod. So that was, uh, you know, four or five days, four days after after those awards were announced. So pretty slow, in my opinion, um, especially, uh, you know, for something where you want to make sure that the integrity is correct and you're doing the right thing and doing the right thing by your uh, by your customers as what well, as what I think I'm calling us now as customers of the KCBS, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, the way it shook out for me is uh, I left Sunday. 
I got home about 4.30 or a little after. Um, I got up Monday morning, went to work. Uh, I was here a couple hours, but I was tired, so I was like, screw it. So me and Hayes went back home because he was with me on Monday. And uh, I went home. I laid down. I took a nap. And when I woke up, I had a couple text messages, a couple missed calls um, for, that basically said I needed to look at the posting. And if I'm going to be completely honest with you, I'm not a, I'm not, when it comes to, to barbecue, I, I try not to dive too far into the data normally after a contest simply because I'm, I'm, I am analytical, but I'm super OCD and I will try to dissect it too much. And by the end of the time I'm in my head. Um, <laughs> so I normally try not to do, that. uh, Allie, my wife actually does that more so than myself. Uh, and she was one of the ones who actually called me and was like, did you see this? And and I was like, I haven't. And she's like, well, we had gotten a call in pork and now we're 47. That doesn't add up, you know? Um, and I was like, yeah, well, there was also a side bets deal um, that I, Mike, uh, I'm going to mess his name up, but uh, from fat and dumb barbecue, I think does for the wild child. Yeah. He had posted some scores that showed the uh that showed um the results and I think that was the original score sheet. Um so when we looked I had just glanced at that. Well, I couldn't see 14th place pork which was our call. Um but I saw butcher barbecue was 15th that day. Well, then whenever the results were posted, Butcher Barbecue was 14th and I was 47th. So I was like, what? You know, instantly it starts to make you question, like, what's going on here? And how did this get, you know, it, it, long and short of it, I was had questions. Um, well, I got a few calls from friends uh, and guys that look at stuff a lot deeper than I do. <laughs> so ultimately, you know, I. To be honest, I was kind of like, I added the scores up and come up to my score. Well, then I added my scores up again, and I was like, well, if my pork is actually 14th, that changes this ballgame, you know. Uh, So, and I'm not, I deal, so we're talking about customers. I deal with clients every day. Um, I have people treat me like shit. You know, sometimes I'm just a sleazeball car salesman, so... I try to make sure that I treat people the way that I hope to be treated, you know, whenever there's issues. Um, so I was like, damn, I, there, someone was like, you can email KCBS to try to get an answer. I'm like, man, I don't, I don't really. So I just messaged Rod, you know, and was like, Hey, I'm not trying to throw a huge red flag or anything. I was just curious if maybe you could answer something for me. Uh, so I, I gave him my phone number. And he called me, uh, and he basically said, you know, hey, there, I've had a few people making phone calls here, I, and your name has been brought up. You know, I figured I would hear from you. And he's like, we are going to I, – I think we're going to do some reviewing of this. And I was like, okay. So uh, – but it was super vague, you know. Um, so I was like, well – Okay. <laughs> so um, he basically said, I don't have any answers. I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm pretty sure my friends that called me and messaged me, I'm pretty sure they spoke on my behalf uh, yeah. prior. Um, so anyway, so I kind of knew something, but I, I didn't want to jump the gun. And, and I, and at that point, then my head starts spinning. You know, I'm like, Holy shit. Is there a change or like what happened? And, and then that's what, like I told you, I dive deep and start analyzing everything. Uh, so then I'm like, I'm asking Allie. I'm calling everyone that I know that's smarter than me. You know, I'm like, hey, can you figure this out? And um, So then Tuesday, I got a phone call from Rod, still very vague, like, hey, we are going to do an audit. We don't know anything. If we do know something, you know. I don't know what's going to happen. I, it, everything may shake out the same. Everything, there might be changes. I don't know, but I will let you know. Um, well, then David had messaged me on Facebook 
And when you messaged me, I'm not gonna lie, I was like, ah, oh. you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was, you know, because you're my friend, and yeah, it, you made the comment, you know, like we, you were joking, but I knew, I knew the uh, severity of the situation. Um, I was standing in my kitchen trimming meat, you know, and, and I was like, yeah. and uh, so yeah, so then it was just kind of for me, it became like this huge, like, well, maybe everything else on my scores are screwed up. And maybe I'm, I went from fifth to 55th or 105th. I don't know. Um, but yeah, well, then Thursday, uh, that's when Rod called me and said he'd already spoke with David and informed me that we, in fact, had won the Royal. Uh, and I think my first words were, oh, fuck, have you talked to David? And he was like, I've already talked to him. And, uh, and then right after I got on the phone with Rob, I guess they made the post of scores maybe like right at the end of my conversation because I'm telling you my phone started going crazy right then. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the old barbecue horn started whistling, and I was like, what is going on? But so then I called David, me and him talked for a while, and it, it's just – I don't even know that they're, they're, it, unfortunate is what I always say, but it's like, it sucks, man, because I run a business. You guys run businesses. you you work in the workforce. Like I get things happen. And, but there's also accountability um, processes that probably need to be implemented. It, it just, in my Facebook post, I said it best. Like, I'm happy and sad all in the same breath. Uh, and unfortunately, what's bad about this is you have one and two on this podcast uh, for a, a world stage, you know, the biggest stage of barbecue. And he and I should be over the moon. But no matter what we talk about, it's always, well, what about the situation? And I yep. feel like sometimes shadowing of that it makes it it makes it a tough position for you to really try to you know I feel like we missed out on the opportunity to soak everything in well now I'm trying to soak everything in and you can't because you're over the moon that you won you're sad for your buddy and you're sad because you can't necessarily talk about being a champion because there was there was astronomical issues that that made it so. I think absolutely you should talk about being a champion to everybody, buddy. You earned that, man. Nobody <laughs> can take that from you. You earned that, buddy. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I'm not saying taken away by any means. With yeah. you know what I'm saying. It's just yeah. it's a tough spot because you can't help but to think about everything else that rolled into it. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, uh, but David and I were talking right before you jumped on, Jordan, and I was like, as I was, I'll be honest with you, I was a touch, not scared, but like, how do, you know, how do we talk about this? And and I I told David, I said, well, man, I mean, this sucks, but you still RGC the Royal, you know, like, like that is a huge, huge thing, and, and uh, you know, it's great to have you both on here and speaking so candidly about it. Um, and uh, you guys have basically answered all the questions that I had already. <laughs> but, you know, the good that can come out of this, right? Because it's obvious that both of you guys love barbecue and love KCBS as much as anybody out there. You know, it, it gives us the the background for the hobby that we all enjoy. And I think that all we can really, all of us really hope for one is the transparency, right? Let's, let's get some ideas of what happened. And two, how do we prevent it? And how do we make the system better moving forward? Right? Absolutely. And, you know, I, I think 
for my like i've already started like uh just on my side just because i'm in tech i've started working and like seeing how hard it is to build a system that would work um that would be implementable right but that that's going to cost some money um from whoever does it right but i just wanted to see if i could get something spun up locally that i could use and it can be done um it just you you have to be willing to make that investment right and i i realize that kcbs is a non-profit organization but uh you know, maybe this is an opportunity for them to partner with some uh, someone that can make that help them make that investment so that they can get uh, get what they need to to get a system that's updated. And that's uh, and that works, frankly, that works and has those checks and balances to make sure that this doesn't happen to anyone else. Because at the end of the day, that's what well, that's what I want. It's like, I don't want anyone ever to have to go through what Jordan and I went through or PDs or. You know, every there are like something like fifty teams I think were affected by this, right? Um, you know, it's just us yeah. because we're at, we're at the top of it, but there there's fallout all over the score sheet, man. And um, you know, to think you have earned something at the Royal and only to be told no, actually, that's not how it worked out. So you know, that's that can be crushing to some, right? Uh, some people aren't as resilient um, or have other things that are going on, and this could have just been, you know, this could could be could be the the one thing that. De- deters them from doing something that you know essentially we all love right so maybe they were on a fence already about about ever cooking again um and this just that pushed them over the edge they don't want to do it anymore right and, and that's unfair um and they shouldn't have had that experience so um i know that it can be done um you know it's just uh it's just a matter of if they want to make that investment and you know if they can find the funds to get it done and get it done right so i, I do want to take a second that's the one thing that i haven't done yet and i i I regret it. Um, I don't know PD smoking pits very well. I, I don't know them at all. I've never met them. I feel for them and, you know, Bill Hine. I mean, you guys know, I mean, me and Bill are our best friends and, and we've talked, you know, and uh, moving, moving PDs from reserve to third and Bill from third to fourth. Um, you know, there's a lot of adjustment there and everyone has talked about me and David, but, I mean, you got to think about those guys as well. Um, that's a big move, you know, because I reserved uh, the World Invitational this year behind Man Meat, and I was ecstatic. I mean, we we were so pumped about that. You know, I was like, we are so close from being a world champion. Um, and, hell, that was, you know, that, that was a huge accomplishment for us. Um, to think how they feel, tell, you know, telling their friends that they deserved it, and now they're moved to third. I feel like they maybe haven't gotten the recognition that they deserve as well. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, I think that's spot on, right? Like I, I don't know them very well either, but I've had, I've been lucky enough to cook with them when I went down to Oklahoma and I've seen them out on the road and, um, you know, I, I look forward, I think they're on the, the roster for Booby So I look forward to seeing them out there, but you know, I just sent them a message and, and just, you know, told them it, it's not lost on me that, uh, that this affected them too as well. And, uh, you know, I hope it doesn't deter them from continuing to come out and cook, but they, they love it, man. And I, I think they'll, they'll continue to be out there, um, which is great. So Good that's deal. awesome. Yeah. I, uh, I need to meet PD. I do not know PD. And, uh, this is the second year where PD has gotten tons and tons of calls at the Royal and, uh, just, Justin McLaughlin and I from Justin from Lucky's Q and I, we always look at each other and go, fucking Petey. Petey's just killing it. <laughs> Petey's just killing it. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. I, they're, they're serious, man. Like, um, I, I listened to, he was on the Barbecue Life podcast with, uh, with the guys from American Fire. And I, I've listened to their story, man. Dude's a chef. He's got chops and, uh, you know, he puts in the work just like everyone else does. And, um, you know, it, it shows, right. And it's him and his mom and they go through like the same things that we all go through. Right. And they, they honestly are a legit team and that, uh, that cook their asses off and try hard and, um, you know, they, they have great success, so they deserve it for sure. That's no question. fantastic. I'm going to have to have, I'm going to have to have Petey on the podcast then. Yeah. Maybe he's a good story. If, he's an awesome story. See if he appreciates our damn Petey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, not an obvious question, but one that I want to ask is, how do you move forward with your next cook? You know, there's a lot of uh, different aspects, a lot of th- things mentally, people coming up. What's wh- what's that like? Have you guys cooked since then? 
Jordan has. He's already out last weekend, I saw, right? And you're back out this weekend for a double? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I, I cooked uh, uh, Smoking for Garrett, which is about 45 minutes from my house, uh, last weekend. Man, it's just – this year for me has kind of been nose to the grind. Um, try to forget all the outside factors. I'm trying to just sell cars and barbecue. Um and unfortunately, I'm not doing super well selling cars this week. But uh, I, uh, yeah, man, I mean, just kind of business as usual, really. You know, I, I uh, and I think that's the biggest thing. It really hasn't set in for me yet. I, I'm, I'm sure it will sometime. Um, I, I don't know. It just hasn't. It just doesn't. It kind of still feels surreal. You know, like maybe when I when I get a trophy. It'll probably that I can look at it, you know. But but right, you want to see I, it? I got it. It's close. Hold on, I'll go get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my! Because <laughs> oh. you're you're still deep involved in a points chase. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hey, no, buddy. Oh, damn. yeah. That's here nice. you go. This thing is heavy as fuck. I can't wait to get it out of my closet. It's, your, it's all yours, though, man. It's pretty cool. I got I got the crown in there for you. You know, I don't know if it's gonna fit on that big ass head of yours, but yeah, I think if I, I think I could get it on there, kind of there you tilt go. it a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Oh. Yeah, man. It's coming. It's coming with me. I got it. As soon as I see you, it's all yours, buddy. Uh. <laughs> oh shit. Oh man, I did not. You just knocked me down out of my chair, buddy. <laughs> uh, I will say this. Uh, I don't know if you guys are wrestling fans or not, but I told Allie if there was any chance we'd get the road, I said, I'm a Val Venus this thing one night. <laughs> <laughs> it's your, that's, that's yours too, buddy. It's all packed up ready for you, man. <laughs> uh, shit. Hell no, dude. I'd, I'd keep that shit if it was me. Just keep it. Call it day. <laughs> no, I don't want it. I don't even want to look at it. Like so, here's 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 where I was, right? They give you all this stuff, and you get home, and you're like, "What the hell am I gonna do with all this shit? Like, what do, what do I need a crown for? What do I need this robe for?" So then I was on Amazon, like looking up like forms because I was gonna put the crown or the, the robe in the office with the crown on it. You know, the trophy was going to the store or whatever. Nope, all that got canceled. Threw that cart at Amazon in the garbage. Actually, you know what I should do is I should pull that cart back up and ship it all to Jordan's house. <laughs> Oh, and you could you could put like a little shrine right on the entrance as you come in the car dealership, you know. Yeah, there you go. yeah, man. Yeah. So I have people come in and and uh, <laughs> they'll all the time be like, sometimes I bring my trailer and park it next to the building, and mm-hmm. uh, they'll be like, "What's this thing out here?" I'm like, oh, uh, "I do competitive barbecue. You sell cars." I'm like, yeah. They're like, "You don't have a restaurant or anything?" I'm like, "Uh, uh-uh. uh, nothing." I'm like, "No." <laughs> Like, well, that don't make much sense. I'm like, well, <laughs> no, no, no. that's you know that's the challenging thing, right? Is because immediately when you tell somebody that you barbecued, their first response is like, "Where you have a restaurant?" And you're like, "No, I just go for strangers in the parking lot, and hang out with my friends." And they're like, yeah. "Why would you do that?" And I was like, "I don't know. Why do you? Why are you? Why, why are you bugging me about it? <laughs> Crazy, right?" Like, yeah, it, it's funny because you. <laughs> We all get these questions, and and I like to make fun of other hot pe- things that people do, like horseback riding and you know horse competitions and stuff. I'm like, who does this weird shit? And I'm like, you do, dummy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do. You do. I cooked last weekend as well, and uh, I didn't want to, but I was really glad that I did, just to go out and hear hear what people were saying about the Royal and, and also, you know, cause I think we all have, have this question moving forward, which, you know, how does this result? How does this, what effect does this have on our feelings about barbecue contests moving forward and the system moving forward? And, uh, because at the end of the day, you guys have both hit the nail on the head in terms of, You know, barbecue contests are great. Winning is great, but we go out and we see our friends and we spend time with our friends and have a great time doing it. And I wanted to test that myself 
So I did. And I had a blast this past weekend and did a lot of talking about this. And, you know, it still felt right. And it's still something I love. And I was glad that I could verify that. So what's your outlook? I mean, what's your opinion? What's your take on this? Mine? Mm -hmm. I think, um, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? At the end of the day, when they knew they had a problem on Saturday with whatever it was, uh, whatever it ends up being, and I'm sure that Rod is going to come out and tell everybody what they found out, they should have not had awards. Uh, they should have did the side categories and just said, we're going to do a live stream of, of open awards whenever we make sure that this is right. Now, that's easy to say, right? Hindsight's twenty twenty. It's easy to say that that's what should have happened. And I'm sure that we'll get all the dynamics that were in play there. Because, um, I mean, it's a pressure-packed situation, right? You know, you have 500 teams in four categories, and you're trying to make sure that all that information is right. It's not just one person doing it. Um, I would love to see what happened there create a positive for barbecue in terms of let's get a system where we can eliminate human error. Let's get a system where these scores are tabulated automatically. That technology exists. Mm -hmm. Um in many different forms. I mean, we all took the stupid SAT test. We all, you know, use Scantrons and shit like that. You know, that stuff is available. I mean, and there's even more high-tech stuff than that, that that can be done. I just think that I think the organization has an incredible opportunity because of this to really improve, improve upon what they do and just make it even better for all of us that participate in it. That's, um, that's my take on it. Um, but at the same time, as a barbecue cook and as somebody who, whose only dream and the only thing that I want to do in barbecue is win that contest. Um, I honestly have tried to put myself in either of your shoes and have a hard time doing it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, again, I know you guys are probably tired of being commended for how you've handled this, but, uh, I, I think you guys are both just amazing people and, and two people I'm really glad to, you know, call friends. I don't know David very well, but I did walk past his trailer a couple of times at the Royal and one was on my sojourn back from taking the potato box. And I looked at him and I said, I was like, no wonder my team's all pissed off every time we come back. <laughs> it's a long walk, isn't it? That's a, that's a long way. <laughs> that's why I got like 10 people with me for eight turn-ins. So they don't all have to walk twice if they don't want to, man. But, uh, that way, nobody's too angry with me by the time the weekend's <laughs> over with. So we can't stay right next to turnings. Oh wow! Yeah. Living that high life, man. Spots. Hashtag so rich. I think it's all that good, right? That's I was walking back and forth, like to come see people, dude. When I was sober, I'm like, damn, this is far. Well, Thursday night, <laughs> I was carrying a <laughs> cart. I walk back. Allie's like. Because she had drove the car over there. She's like, you want to ride? I'm like, I'm good. I don't remember walking back. But I remember the next morning, I was like, damn, I wasn't winded or anything when I got back over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh, uh Yeah. It's cool. It was fun. Dead tired Thursday night. Just to start the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, let me look at my questions here. I don't think I have anything else. Um. But again, I hope some good comes of this. Um, and congratulations to both of you on a great American Royal. Appreciate and, uh, it. You, you know what, Jordan, to your point, I will make sure to have PD on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think uh, that's perfect. Yeah, I think that's a good thing to do. And and plus, I, I just that's part of me being selfish and just want to tell them about my fucking PD and awards. Like, <laughs> PD. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it sounds like um, 
great story. Uh, what's up next for both of you guys in terms of cooks? Uh, I'll be in uh, Topeka, Kansas this weekend. Um, actually, the next three weekends, Topeka, Kansas. I'm heading to New Jersey next week, which is the stupidest thing I'm ever going to do. Uh, heading there and then going to BBQ. Are you flying like Brad style to Jersey? You driving? Uh, I'm not a high roller. I gotta put. You won the royal, man. Somebody's gonna want you to cook on their jambo out there. Or sorry, team outlaw. Sorry, somebody's gonna yeah. want you to cook on their outlaw at least once. So, man, to be honest, I thought about it. Like, I'm not good enough, man, to like cook under a tent I, in my trailer, man. I, like, I know where everything is. I feel like if I cooked under, like, Drew Davis gives me a hard time a lot, but like, I know where everything is at. And I feel like if I was under a tent, I would be scrambling, you know, looking for something, cooking out of totes. I just don't – I don't think that would be my style. I wouldn't know what so, to do. So if we need to get a few points on Jordan, we got to have somebody sneak into his trailer after we get him really drunk, rearrange everything, and then <laughs> yeah. we, we stand a chance. We stand a chance. Yeah. You have to do it at the Royal because I don't drink in any other contest. I only drink like three times a year. So that's normally why like four beers in, I'm slurring all words. Man, I didn't know. I didn't know somebody that never had sleeves on was so soft. Can't, can't cook out of a pop up. What kind of shit is that? Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, I wish you had a picture of Jordan with no sleeve. Can we make that like the the uh, the, the image for the podcast? I think I got one somewhere. I think I did. If you don't, I'm going to find one. I think I got him from walking down the street in Excelsior Springs after turn in. It's just a sweaty mess because it was like 1,200 degrees that weekend. Yeah, I, I got it. Let's hey, let it. Me get, I'm going to give you the insight of of the cutoffs. So for our barbecue, we have a big lake that's right next to our house. Uh, it just And I was a big boater. I partied all the time. So I always just had cutoff T-shirts going to the lake. Well, anyway, my first barbecue contest I did was in, like, July. Hot as all get out. Well, I was in, like, basketball shorts and a cutoff. Well, my buddies, one of them actually knew Allie. I mean, her was just dating at the time. Uh, I had met these guys, and they were just hammered. I mean, partied up. And uh, anyway, we talked, whatever. No big deal. We became pretty good friends. Probably, like, six months later, we're talking. And they're like – Hey man, so like, we're gonna be honest. I'm like, okay. We're like, we thought you were just like some bum that was like booching off your life. I'm like, what? They're like, you were in basketball shorts and a, you look like a, you look rough. I'm like, I wear a shirt and tie. like, I wear, I'm a professional. I wear dress work. Like, I'm barbecued. What do you do? Be out here in a polo? And, uh, so from that point forward, I told Ali, I was like, I'll always be in a cutoff no matter what. It don't matter. We're not moving away from it. So that's it. <laughs> that's the vibe. I love it. That and, is amazing. I'm going to get me a janky like cutoff shirt, man. Yeah. Hey, yeah, merch shop. Open up a merch shop, buddy. Yeah, but no, please. <laughs> Nothing like a 200 pound man in a muscle shirt. Hey, I'm on my way, baby. Let's do it. That's right. I'm on my way. I ch- I tried that look one time, Jordan, and my team said, nope. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, Allie's over here looking at the eye candy all day. I'm sure she's like, damn. But I don't care. I'm not changing it. (laughs) I like it. But up next for Machete Boys Barbecue is just barbecue. Um, I had plans of going down to Osawatomi, but unfortunately that contest did not make its count, so that, uh, that got canceled. I ain't got the balls to drive to New Jersey, um, so I ain't doing that. And uh, barbecue is, uh, it seems like an appropriate into the season. And then after that, man, it's, uh, you know, being from Minnesota, it's it's all about how much snow we're going to get and when we're going to get it. And if I can get to where I'm going safely without uh, without endangering myself and, and uh, losing a bunch of I'm losing a bunch of stuff. So um, we'll, just, we'll see what happens. So um, barbecue and then to be determined after that. I'm not. I cook in New Jersey, and I live four miles away from it, so <laughs> it four hours away. What's that? I said at least come out there. Nah, I got to work, man. That's oh, all right. This is prime working time for me, so 
I get it. Uh, but if you want some pointers when you're going up there, I'm happy to share. So I, I probably need them. <laughs> <I> probably- <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, this uh, I want to thank you again to both for being on here, and uh, good luck moving forward, guys. And hopefully, this brings about the change that we all want to see. Absolutely, absolutely, thank- man. Thanks for having us. Thank you for listening to Pitmaster, an old Virginia Smoke podcast. Be sure to subscribe and like the podcast, rate the podcast, and to share it out with all your friends. Also, be sure to check out the Old Virginia Smoke YouTube channel as well. Tune in next week for another great episode of Pitmaster. For companies interested in advertising, please contact Old Virginia Smoke directly via www.oldvirginiasmoke.com. Pitmaster, an Old Virginia Smoke podcast, is edited by Chris Sedanka. Pitmaster, an Old Virginia Smoke podcast, is a property of Old Virginia Smoke, LLC. All rights reserved. Old Virginia Smoke.